In this video, I'm gonna show you how to track just about any mask for just about any reason in Resolve. And the best part is I'm gonna show you how to do it in the free version. There's so much wisdom in this one. Let's go. Here we have a nice festive clip of presenting a present, a present, presenting a present. And let's say that we want to make a mask. We want to isolate this present here. Do something with that. Or heck, maybe you want to mask anything else in this here shot for whatever reason. The techniques I'm about to show you all work kind of the same way. Let's start out real simple. Let's say we want to take this present and we want to just change its color. That's something that is great to do in the color page. So we'll just switch over to the color page. And normally what you would do is some combination of masking and adjusting things with curves. In fact, if you do use the color curves, you can probably just mask this just kind of well. So we'll just kind of do a sort of good mask here. And then we can go to the color curves and go to this second little button here called hue versus hue and we can color pick this golden color and that'll make three control points here on my hue curve and i can take this middle one and push it up and down and guess what now we have a green we'll just widen this out a little bit and that's a pretty good color change that isn't adjusting anything else and like i said we just don't even have to have that great of a mask so i can kind of it's getting into her hand a little bit here but i mean Man, I can do a pretty bad job, and this will still work pretty well. Mostly just have to mask the bottom where her hand is. Maybe just feather this out a little bit, just with the softness. And there we have, we're changing that green. And that would do a pretty good job just for a quick job here. But when we play this back, we'll see, oh, it doesn't really work that well. Actually, for part of, for part of the shot, it does work decently but we have the mask off for the rest of the time. So how do we track the mask and have it move with it? I'm glad you asked. In the color page, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is just put your mask on something and oftentimes, often, you can just track the mask and it'll work. Now, I'm not sure if it's gonna work in this scenario. Let's go ahead and try it and we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna switch over to the tracking palette here and then just track back and forth and let's see what goes down. Gosh dang it. It seems like it worked pretty well. Okay, can we just hold up for a minute? Cause that's crazy. Like that's, that's a, it's like, it's a, it's a little much. Look at this, look at how much of the background I'm selecting here. Look at all these, there's like all these high contrast lines and stuff and it just knows to ignore that. And it just knows that I wanna stick it to the gift here. What the heck is going on? This is the thing in Resolve that I think might be actual black magic, okay? It's troubling, we need to pray about that. But then what's great is once you have your track, you can adjust this mask just to be a little bit closer, might as well be safe here. And it will track that mask and move it along with the shot. And I don't know what you want, man, that looks pretty good. It's getting a little bit on her neck here, so we can be a little bit more choosy. In fact, we can even cut in on this red a little bit just because we're just changing that green. And that's gonna work fine. Gonna work fine. Looks pretty good. So now she's holding a green present instead of a golden present. And so that's like the simplest way, I would say, to track a mask to do something in Resolve is just in the color page, you just mask whatever you want, you go over to the track palette and you hit track. And a lot of the time it does a really great job and it will just stick to anything. Y'all people don't believe me, check this out. Let's just change the color of her eyes here. I've made a new node here. I'll grab a circle window and I'm just gonna put this over her eye, just like glasses, like this. So here's one here and I'll make another circle node just by hitting this button here. We'll scale this down. I don't need it to be very soft when we track it. We're just gonna use these kind of glasses things to track her eyes, okay? Just put glasses on her. Go over to track and we'll track this window. Switch back over to our other windows here and select this. Put it over her eye first, then track back and forth. Okay, and now that that tracking information is there, we can adjust this mask to be just around her eyes like this. And then anything that we do in this node, for instance, again, just grabbing this color and kind of changing it, just make these kind of blue like that. Maybe we'll saturate this a little more. Anything like that, this down a little more. So now we have her eyes bright kind of green and it looks really great. Didn't really even have to do much.
But this is the kind of stuff that you can do in the color page really easily is just select something, kind of change its color. And that's just by masking it and then tracking the mask. If you're wanting to do something other than just change the color of something, if you're wanting to put things behind other things, like do some rotoscoping, that's what you're going to want to do in the fusion page. Let's go back to our edit page. I'll just go to another version of this clip and I'll head into fusion. So here we can do similar things to what we would do in the color page, but it's, it's honestly just a little bit more work because the tracker is kind of different. So you really only want to do stuff in the fusion page when you're cutting something out and you're wanting to put something behind it or stick a logo to something. But let's look at the general workflow for doing something like that. First of all, uh, if we're just going to cut this out and we want to put something, you know, between her and the present, you know, whether it's a title or something like that, you want to put something kind of between these two. That would involve grabbing a mask that kind of cuts this out and separates this onto a different layer, a different image, so that we can isolate just this part. And we could put, you know, if we have text, we can put text behind this and have it occluded by that mask. Well, we're going to want to do this a little bit different than how we would do it in the color page. In the color page, you'd draw the mask first, but in the fusion page, you generally want to track things first. And there's a couple different ways you can track something. The easiest and probably the most like the color page would be the planar tracker. So if you type shift spacebar and type P-L-A-N-A-R, that'll bring up our planar tracker. We can run our footage into the planar tracker and then we can essentially draw a mask. So I'll do kind of a similar mask to what we did here on the color page like this. I'll go over here to the inspector and hit set and then track this forward, go track backward. And you'll see <laughs> why the color page is crazy. <laughs> because look at this, it's obvious that it should be tracking stuff on the shirt. That's kind of what it's picking up and it's just ignoring this whole present, right? That's kind of what it should do in the color page, but no, no, it has to use weird magic. And so something like this isn't going to be really great to use the planar tracker for because the planar tracker looks at an area and it finds all these little tracking points and then it tracks them all together and it kind of gives you that average movement, okay? So this would be something that would work really well if we were doing something more like the stuff on her face, right? So if we were to select her face like this with the planar tracker set and track this, then it would do a pretty good job of tracking her face and it would move along with it, see? And so if we did want to do something like give her an eye patch or <laughs> something like that, you know, give her sunglasses, so you know what, let's do it. Let's, let's get crazy. Let's give her some sunglasses. I'm just going to make a background and a polygon mask and we'll just give her the world's most fancy sunglasses here. <laughs> These are terrible. <laughs> These are so bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> and yet we can take this planar tracker and hit this little button, create planar transform. And what that'll do is make a transform node that we can run this through and we can make the world's greatest <laughs> glasses and stick them to her face. Okay. <laughs> so good. Such good glasses. <laughs> you would use real glasses. Okay. <laughs> but you can do stuff like that in fusion and the planar tracker makes it easy and it works a lot like the tracker in the color page. But when you have something like this and you want to stick a logo to it, let's say, and you don't really have any kind of features here that are moving along with the present, then you're gonna to have to do a different kind of track. This, if we want to put this H logo onto here, we could do so using a point tracker. So shift spacebar tracker, and then we'll make sure we're looking at that here. This kind of tracker allows you to pick a single point. I'm just dragging this box around and I'll pick this upper left corner like this. And then I can add another tracker just by hitting add tracker IntelliTrack. We'll take this and put this one down below like that. And we can track these back and forth. And what that will do is figure out where each of these trackers should be every frame. So this top one, it's going to follow and stick itself to the top corner there. Just kind of go through here and make sure it's not jumping around or anything silly. So that one's good. That one follows it. This one too, pretty much sticks on the bottom of our present. And once we have two points that are tracked, we can figure out the movement as well as the rotation and the scale by how those two move in relation to each other. So we can go over here to the inspector here in our tracker controls and go to operation and go from operation none to operation match move. 
What this will do is take anything that we want to stick to this. Let's just take our logo and I'll hit shift spacebar and type XF for transform and we'll scale this down and we'll rotate this and stick this on the side of the box. And look at that. It moves along with it. Look at that. That's cool. Now, sometimes something silly happens. Like it kind of moves, it kind of tweaks like that. You can kind of see that little tweak right there. This tracker probably lost the track there for just a second. So let's just kind of go back and forth. I'm hitting the left and right brackets on the keyboard. And I'm just looking for one frame where it doesn't move. You see, it goes move, 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 doesn't move, move again. <laughs> So let's make sure that's moving. Okay, this is supposed to be up here like this. So we're just fixing that. It's probably supposed to be right there. Good. Okay, we'll make sure that the same thing's happening up here. Move, 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 move. It's moving every frame. Right here, didn't move. Let's make sure that that moves in between like that. And if each of these is right, then we should have a pretty good track. As this moves, does a pretty good job following the movement of the box. Okay, so that isn't a mask necessarily. That's how you would stick a logo onto something. And of course, it would help if there was some lens blur on this. Make sure we blur that the same as the package. Maybe go to the tracker, go to settings and turn the blend down a little bit just to blend that color. And now we have a much more realistic little thing. It's pretty good. Now you have your logo on the brand for the commercial, right? But you can use this same idea to track a mask. So I have this kind of prepared so we can see it. Here I have just a polygon mask on a green background that we're running into a tracker. And so same thing, tracked it with these two corners. Let's just merge this over so we can see it. And now we have this mask over the present that we can use to cut things out. For instance, we could have some text here that we'll merge over. And we could use this tracked mask as a mask for the text. Let's go to settings and apply that mask inverted. Now we have the text behind the present. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Pretty much the idea is you have to track something and a planar tracker is a little bit faster, but it can have a little bit of problems. Whereas you can use a point tracker and sometimes get a much better track with not that much work. If you wanna practice your tracking and masking skills a little bit, this is the perfect video for you. This is a workshop where we do visual effects for a short film and it has all kinds of nerdy things like this. You can download the footage and follow along. It's pretty great. I'll see you over there. I have a handle, but I don't use it.